And Alec. Now, just before you present, just uh, just be aware there are changes to some of the uh, recommendations there. So there is a new set of recommendations put up by myself, and I know Councillor Sims wanted a second, so did Councillor Hulse, but someone got in first, Councillor Hulse. So, so just just clarify, I put those recommendations through, and I asked to move it, but it's been moved and seconded. So can we just be clear on who's moving what? Um, well, we can put them as amendments if you want your name and... No, no, it's not about that, but it's it's about, so, uh, you know, who's doing the so work. So, Councillor Darby and, and others suggested the changes to A and B, and um, Councillor Simpson and myself are suggesting the addition of D. John. Ben the lot. Okay, thank you. Uh, through you, Chair. Um, just a bit of background to this portfolio. Uh, it was originally around about $300 million, um, previously managed by Auckland Council Investments Limited. A couple of years ago, the management of the fund was taken over by Auckland Council Parent. Uh, I should point out that it's managed in exactly the same way that it was managed by ACIL, <coughs> and that uh, Council has not added any additional funds uh, to the diversified asset portfolio. Uh, what we have done is... Um, liquidate $100 million of the fund back in um, August of 2016. So the fund balance now sits at about $230 million. We have approval to invest another $100 million in 2017-18 uh, financial year, which based on current market conditions reduced the fund back to about $130 million. Now I've been asked to have a look at the responsible investment policy, which we have done. Uh, we've, we've engaged CAER out of Australia. Uh, what they've done is come back and given us what they believe to be best practice in this area. And they've come back with basically four things they believe we should exclude, uh, being weapons, tobacco, fossil fuels and gambling. Now that's not to say that all funds in the world exclude these things. Um, they don't. And obviously some funds exclude additional things as well. Um, what they have simply have done have looked at um, what most policies exclude and um, asked us to consider that for adoption. I should point out that the way we manage this portfolio is we don't invest directly. So we engage with fund managers. Mm -hmm. um, the reality of the situation is that the more we exclude in this policy, the more difficult it is for council to find fund managers around the world who will actually uh, meet our objectives. So it's just worth pointing out that the size of the fund, especially once we divest the second 100 million, 130 million, uh, it is a relatively small size. So the second recommendation here that we had originally was that we should review the long-term viability of the fund, especially in light of Council's current balance sheet constraints and the need to fund in new infrastructure. Right, we have questions first. We have Councillor Hulse and Councillor Simpson. Actually, mine's not a question. I'm happy to speak to the recommendations, oh, right, Mr. Then. Chair. Well, we'll deal with questions first. Then. So, so Councillor um, Simpson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, gentlemen, if you had the cash today, would it be invested in such as it has been now? After you, Chair, if we had the cash today, we'd use it to pay down debt. Councillor Darby. Uh, thank you. Just a few questions. So I um, placed the A and the B there in red as amended. Mr Chair, I needed to go through the amendments that I'd propose, but I don't really want to go and list it in a motion. It just becomes a bit laborious and cumbersome. Yep. Can I look at uh, members, can I draw your attention, and then I'll get feedback from the staff. Um, though I've discussed this with one staff member, but not both, that are presenting here today. So if we look at the Appendix 1, which is uh, the, the policy, and then I'll go to Appendix 2, um, and they are related. So I'm proposing the, an amendment um, after the four bullet points, the next para, which second page? line, we have the word restrict oh, exposure. Which page, Councillor? Oh, yeah. It is page 35, Appendix 1, which is page 90 of the, of the agenda. And I'll just run through these, Mr Chair, and then ask the staff to respond uh, on all of them. 
I'm proposing to change the word from restrict to avoid. Bullet point. I'm proposing... Which bullet point? Go through it again. After the fourth bullet point, the next paragraph, second line, the word restrict, mm -hmm. change to avoid. The next line, starting companies with, um, delete the word core. I'll come to the reason why. Then we've got uh, a list of four activities, and I'm proposing to strike out the word after the word gambling, strike out the word machines, because gambling is bigger than just machines. Then I go to the guidelines, which we're always uh, we're also proposing to approve, which is over the page on Appendix 2, page 91 of Agenda 36 of the consultant's report. The most substantial thing there is I'm proposing that we, we strike out the materiality clauses. So second bullet point, full stop after tobacco, striking out the balance. Uh, third bullet point, full stop after activities, oh no, sorry, striking out subject to materiality threshold of 10% 10, 10 of the company's uh, revenue, leaving the word and, uh, leaving the word taking out substantial. <clears throat> so striking that out, full stop. The next line just has the word gambling, investments, gambling investments, not just operators or machines, but gambling investments. And then the very last one, if you can stay with me, is for screening that we in, uh, add to the screening and it would be up to the fund manager. We've got high sugar, low nutrient products and alcohol will be screened by the fund manager and alcohol. It's not banning it. It's not excluding it entirely. It's just screening it. So that, that, I won't comment, Mr Chair. I'll just give the staff who have hopefully kept up the opportunity to comment. Uh, thank you. I'll throw you, Chair. Um, look, I guess a couple of points to raise. It comes down to the practicality of what we're trying to achieve here. If we take out the materiality thresholds, it can lead to, um, to a very difficult exercise. I mean, we do invest through funds. Um, some of these funds hold over 150 investments in worldwide companies. We don't know exactly what each of them do down to the, the last percent. Um, so it comes down to look essentially what is practical and what's uh, what's not. So, for example, what you've proposed there, Councillor Darby, um, to avoid exposure to, for example, generating revenue from the operation of gambling, that would mean we can't invest in, in supermarkets because they sell a lot of tickets and scratchy tickets. I mean, and wine. And wine. Well, well alcohol is okay, I think, under the proposal here, but if it's operation of gambling, then um, supermarkets would be n not be able to be included. They sell tobacco, sir. Well, they don't, they don't manufacture tobacco, they sell it. They don't manufacture scratchy. It's the same principle. They don't. They make money out of it. So just back to the alcohol again, John, just explain that. Well, I wonder what's proposed. I don't think it's it's one we'd look at and scan. We wouldn't actually avoid it. Um, but again, as, as I said before, the more you add to this list, the tighter you make the exclusions, the more difficult it is for us to actually engage with fund managers. Mm. The reality is fund managers, to a large extent, they're not going to change what they invest in because of what council demands. It may lead us having to go down direct investing. So investing ourselves without going through fund managers, that would add a degree of complexity and cost in administration. The supplementary That's question, Mr Chair, because I'll just... I'll just so can we take it from the top, please, um, and not just home in on one you have a problem with? So the word avoid, replacing the word restrict. Are these questions, or, or, or are we formulating okay. resolutions? Because I'd like to ask. So through, through, through you, Chair, just, just, just to be clear, we don't have a problem with, with anything being proposed here. Um, we don't have an opinion on what should be in there and what shouldn't be in there. I'm just trying to point out the practicalities, because everyone in this room is going to have a different view on what's ethical and what's not. And the more we exclude, the more difficult it is to actually practically manage this portfolio. So how do we navigate this, Mr Chair? I've, I've proposed an A and a B, but I need to explain the A and a B, and I need to take the members through it. 
probably so would have been appropriate if you'd come back with these point details of, point of order, before Mr. the meeting. So. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Yep. Wait on, Mr. Chair. I emailed point of order, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yep. Point, point of order. I, are we still uh, involved in asking questions, or are we now making the, um, uh, making the amendments and, and adding to the amendments? I think that I think Chris, uh, uh, Councillor Darby has a point, but I think there's a we, we need to clarify some questions from the officials first, and uh, I'm afraid we're not doing that while he's uh, engaged in this exercise. We have these amended resolutions up here. I haven't heard those coming through as resolutions yet, but we can come back to it. So we're going to Councillor Sorry, Mr Simpson. Chair. Sorry. I, I did say in moving A and B, hmm? rather than me under as amended and list give a whole list which would drive the members crazy, I'm asking questions, which is what this process is about. At this time, and on this item, it's a time to ask questions, and that's what I'm doing. I'm only doing that. So how do you want to guide this to allow me I think and others... we'll come back, because it's actually almost asking... Asking questions on a, your own It's amendments. asking for an opinion um, of the staff as to what... I'm not sure whether you're kind of leading in asking them to almost change the resolutions and make the changes themselves. I'm not sure whether that's appropriate. That's more. Thank you. So I know I'm getting the mood around the table is that I think we want to move on. You what, sorry? I'm getting the impression that we want to move on to other people who have got questions and we can come back to you, Councillor Darby. Look, I've got some other questions on the materiality. Uh, so the writer of this document, um, and John, you've, you've suggested that we need to play it safe and that there are, I think your words were, um, that we, um, we ex the more we exclude, the more difficult it is to find fund managers around the world. Um, what evidence do you base that statement on when the New Zealand Super Fund have advised me that they have no issue finding fund managers around the world to exclude certain products and services? And that the business of uh, of fund manager is is growing by the day. Um, through you, Chair, I mean the super fund also has a lot of direct investing. I guess the point I'm making is just that the more we exclude, the more difficult it will be to find fund managers. And remember, the New Zealand Super Fund has considerable more money than what we have or will be left with, which is going to be relatively a pittance. I'll come back to further yep. questions. Councillor Casey. You can take this as a comment on a point of order, Mr Chairman, but I am really concerned about D. I came to this meeting to discuss the responsible investment policy. And the recommendation in the agenda, which was out to the public, is that we would um, review <coughs> the diversified asset, financial asset portfolio <coughs> and report back. But suddenly we are now selling off the family silver by way of an amendment in red up there without any, any public acknowledgement, any public discussion or any councillor discussion. And I, for one, am not prepared to have that discussion today. And I think that that needs to be removed right now from the board because it's not... It's not been publicly notified. And just on that, what triggers our significance policy if this doesn't? Yeah. $130 million is a lot of money, and it's not going in a D in red on there by whoever, whether it was Councillor Darby or yourself. Somebody wrote that up there, and I, for one, am not, I don't see it in my agenda. That means the public didn't see either. So there's two discussions. Yep. I'm happy to have the responsible investment discussion today, yep. and that's what I'm prepared for. But that other one, that's coming up later in the year. And it's certainly not that. And that might be one of the options that staff come back with, but we're not endorsing that, that today. That is certainly what the C and D are run together, and it will come back, and you have the options. D shouldn't be up there. Shouldn't be up there. Report. Read it. It's a disgrace. Who wrote that? Who wrote that up there? Okay, well, if it'll get voted down, they'll be, they'll be done well, it's individually. That's not about no, point of order. Done individually. Point of order. Yes. That has not been publicly disclosed yes. through this agenda. Yes. I prepared for my meeting today, and I am not prepared for a debate on that today. 
So that debate should be had another day and that should come down and go back to the original. The, 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 original, the original recommendation is to review and come back. People have had a gut full of SHLs. It's not it's not having it like that. That's not the way we do it, isn't it? It's not. It's not. It's in the report. It's in the report. Point of order. Can we, are we a, was talking about. Yes, please. I'm yep. just in terms of the conduct of the meeting, Mr. Chairman. Just asking if it's appropriate that everybody's yelling across. No, it's I'd really not appropriate appreciate at you, all. But um, you having um, control of the meeting. That's what people want to do. Mayor Goff. Yeah, um, I've got two questions. Uh, the first question relates um, actually to Dr. Robert Howell's suggestion that we follow the Norwegian. Uh, government's sovereign wealth fund principles and practices uh, and leaving aside the irony that the sovereign wealth fund was almost entirely Under coming from fossil gas. fuel uh, yes, um, right. in the North Sea, yeah, um, is there a reason why we could not practically follow those principles and practices which are regarded, uh, I presume, as best practice? I'll, I'll, if I take one question at a time, Mr Chairman, please. Yeah, through you, Chair. I mean, there's a, there's a number of methodologies and ways to go about this. Um, we looked at CAER as an independent advisor. There are many other independent advisors and views, um, such as what's been adopted by the Norwegian Fund. Uh, equally, we could look at other funds as well. Um, in reality, there's, there's no one right answer on this, no one wrong answer. Um, so, look, we've chosen to use CAER but there was, there's plenty of other consultants and input we could get as well. But again, there's, there's just no one right answer to get to here. Yep. Uh, I, I guess the point of the question is that I'm presuming from the presentation that we've all heard that that is a rather more comprehensive uh, set of I outlines for how we might invest rather than uh, CAER, which is perhaps narrower. Yeah, through you, Chair. Look, I'm not familiar enough with the Norwegian Fund to, to be able to answer that one. Okay. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, the second question, I, uh, I guess, um, whether or not we, we, we pass um, the, the new recommendation there, the Council has made the decision to, to divest a, a, a substantial amount of the diversified uh, asset portfolio. And uh, I think I understand the reasons for that. Um, but those reasons aren't being discussed and debated here, and obviously in relation uh, to D, um, it may be worthwhile your outlining to us the reason why the fund has been divested to the extent that it has, and why implicitly in the recommendation uh, you're asking us to consider the, uh, the winding up of the fund altogether. Uh, through you, Chair, I mean, I mean, the reality of Auckland Council, it's facing large infrastructure and growth, growth challenges, uh, and we do have balance sheet constraints. So, um, again, this asset is it's not core to delivering services on behalf of Auckland. It's not structured in a way like it's a rainy day fund. It will be invested in different assets completely. Uh, I guess it's, it's very similar to someone having a very large mortgage but also having investments on the side. Normally you'd, you'd pay down your mortgage. Um, so it's a more efficient use of our, our balance sheet to not have this fund and have a lower debt level. How does, if I can ask a supplementary to that, Mr Chair, how, I mean obviously we've got the problem of debt to revenue ratio. How, would the, <coughs> how does the divestment of this fund influence those considerations on, on either side, the debt and the revenue? Uh, through, through you, Chair, um, it does free up a small amount of balance sheet, the constraint, because obviously it does reduce debt, but it also would reduce revenue depending on the return of the fund. And if you're balancing out those considerations, which side does it come down on? Good question. Uh, again, through you, Chair, look, I think it's a much more sensible approach just to uh, limit our debt. Mm -hmm. um, the, the point is this, is this is not a strategic holding. Um, it's, it's not something we need to be involved in to deliver council services. Um, and there's no, there's no rationale or logic behind the size of the fund, whether it be 130 million, 330 million, or whatever figure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. John, as a supplementary, what, what is our net gain with this investment fund at the moment as compared to paying down some debt? 
one percent or look it's um it very much depends on the return of the fund i mean the fund um going back a few years did perform quite well because the the markets were going up bond markets were rallying share markets were rallying but again um how the markets perform in the future is, is anyone's business i again come back to the same point that look it's just not core council business Councillor Lee. Yeah, I, I'm disappointed that the discussion has completely <coughs> rambled right off uh, course from responsible investment to, to essentially what is irresponsible divestment and spending. spending. C can I ask the hundred million that was spent or sold up in the last over the last year? Can we have a breakdown of where th that uh, money went to? Through you, Chair. I mean, in reality, that fund, uh, this, the sale of the 100 million reduced our debt by 100 million. So we used debt to fund new capex. So essentially, that 100 million was used to fund new infrastructure development for Auckland. Yeah, yeah, we hear the word infrastructure. I see a great big building over there that's costing us 200 million that we didn't need to buy, and 1.2 billion plus in. In IT that doesn't work pro properly. I, I guess we call that infrastructure. I would like a breakdown of where those investments are, that where that money has been spent. Thank you. Yeah. Through you, Chair, again, the funds are intermingled. You, you, we haven't taken 100 million from the DFAP and put it towards any specific investments. It simply gets used to fund our general capital expenditure, which Groceries. goes towards infrastructure. Groceries. Through you, Chair, not groceries, well, no. Capital wasn't groceries, but. No, no. No. What we are doing is, Councillor can I ask one more question, we are we selling revenue earning investments to buy non-revenue earning infrastructure? Through year chair, yes the fund does return revenue in, in most years, or volatile as it may be. In reality a lot of our infrastructure uh, capital expenditure does not earn revenue. Well, then we should borrow more if that's your case, Mike. Councillor Hulse. We should borrow more, mate. The Mayor asked my question, but I will ask another question. Is it correct that the funds that were sold down in the last year were used to buy infrastructure and not spent on so called groceries? <laughs> Through you, Chair, that is correct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hulse. Councillor Sayers. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and um, thank you for coming along from Treasury and answering the questions. They've been most helpful, as have the questions from the, uh, the Mayor and the other councillors. Um, particularly your answer around that it's not core business. So, look, I just want to um, ask my question around paragraph 6 in the, in the summary there, which just reads, Given the reduced size of the diversified financial asset portfolio, officers recommend that a review of the viability of the fund be undertaken. And immediately I look at D um, up on the screen, which has been um, mentioned by a few councillors already as a, as a bit of a concern to them. However, it's probably not so much a concern to me if you're able to answer this question. And that's just, does that, does that paragraph, what point six there, are you really saying um, does that mean you would like to sell down the rest of the fund to reduce the debt so we can get out of a non-core function and, and invest more into core business? Is that, is that the purpose of that sentence? Uh, through you, Chair. Look, that, that's pretty well spot on about the purpose. In reality, once the fund gets down to 120, 130 million, look, I know it's a, it's a lot of money, but compared to a debt uh, balance of 8 billion and growing, it's relatively immaterial. Um, but it earns revenue. Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've got a couple of questions, if that's okay. So um, I just wanted to first question from recollection, we in the annual plan, 2016 17 annual plan, we consulted on the annual plan about this divestment of the $200 million. Um, divestment over two years is that we did do a consultative procedure I think in the annual plan because we would have had to I do remember us doing I'm pretty sure so um, first we have actually been out to the public and I don't remember any major issues the other question I have is um, 
I'm feeling maternal today. If we today agreed to sell the um, $130 million residual amount, because we've got, we've, we've got $230 million to sell, but another um, resolution to do the rest of it today. Uh -huh. um, is there still value in working through all these guidelines oh, um, in terms of responsible, <coughs> if we don't have that portfolio? Will we need that, will that be so crucial to, to be working through this long list if we actually get rid of it? Uh, through you, Chair, uh, obviously, if the fund ceased to exist, um, it wouldn't be the same, I guess, need for a responsible investment policy, obviously, as it relates to this fund. But again, that's um, really something for the, the councillors to decide. Please, but, on, that, just sorry, we just need to be clear here, though. Yeah, it's not. If we approve the revised responsible investment policy and guidelines, then we've got them in, they're locked in. Then we're going to... Yeah. So it's there forever and a day, yeah. OK? Because we, we could clear these funds, but then we could end up with funds back again that are surplus, where we may decide what we're going to do. And, let's, and, and Councillor Lee talked about the ASB building. Now, clearly, probably that's something that some people would dearly love to sell, and it may be an option, but it, then we may end up deciding to reinvest that money rather than wiping off debt at that time. So, so we want to have the guidelines because we are doing the right thing here. We're doing the moral and ethical thing here. And that's really important to send that signal that, that, that we're making that decision. So, Alec, do you want to expand? Yeah, sorry. I, I, just to expand on that and, and, and just for clarity, I, I sit in the Chief Sustainability Office. I've been working with the Treasury guys on, on this. Um, and exactly to your point, you know, in the future there may be funds that come in here, and this is really um, about uh, mitigating long-term risk. And we heard some presentations earlier that whatever investments uh, we decide to go in the future, um, we need a policy that allows us to do that. Um, it also reinforces some of those positions that we state as a council that we're, um, we're we're pushing for our agendas around climate change, around tobacco, around sugary drinks. Um, so it's really an important message to send to our residents that this is something that we take seriously. Um, it's important to send a message to the businesses that look to invest in Auckland, the residents that may come here in the future. Um, and, and it's really that element that we need to, um, I guess, consider when we're um, voting on this responsible investment policy. Um, in terms of CCOs, so if we have, if I don't know if they'd ever have any spare money, to be quite honest. Um, but is this an expectation that this would um, stretch to the CCO's investment policies, or is it an, a council policy that wouldn't apply? The expectation would. Through, through you, Chair. Um, I think the first point is that look, the CCOs don't really have funds to invest, but it would be our expectation that it would make sense to have this as a group policy. I just, I just get um, Ms. Tindall just to comment on the uh, the Kiwi Saver default um, scenario. Thank you. Um, through the chair, there was a, a point raised earlier about the uh, def who was the default provider, which organisation is the default provider uh, for Auckland Council's Kiwi Saver uh, scheme. That's both contributions that council makes and also contributions that employees make. Uh, I've checked with um, our um, people and capability area. They can advise that the default provider is Civic Financial Services Limited. Um, I've asked them secondary question of which they're coming back to me with a response on as to their compliance with uh, any of the issues that other uh, default providers such as the New Zealand Super Fund or Westpac was another uh, Westpac Kiwi Saver Fund found themselves on. So I can update you on that as soon as I have that information. Councillor Watson. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, just following on from that last question then, uh, and to make it very clear, we don't have any other investments currently outside of the diversified financial asset portfolio that would be covered by a responsible investment policy. Is that correct? Uh, through you, Chair, we, we do have a very small historic trust and reserves portfolio. Um, that is entirely invested in cash and bond type assets. So it's a bit like a Monty Python type skit here, isn't it, where we're spending a lot of time 
purporting to take the moral high ground where our real intention is to, is to get rid of the funds in their total, which renders a responsible investment policy almost redundant. So I just make that observation that mixing the two up like this kind of makes us look a bit ridiculous, if, if you ask yeah, me. Yeah. Huh. Only. Councillor Wayne Walker. Sure. Um, the first question is, is really just the, the Mayor's question, um, but I'll ask it again. So the Mayor asked quite specifically around the history of our fund to date and how that is performed comparatively in a debt to revenue sense with how we would be performing um, otherwise. Um, Obviously, in order to answer that question, one of the things that we have to look at is what sort of return we're getting on our investment, if we call it that, in the activities that we're involved with in terms of generating revenue. That may be a little uh, difficult to answer, but certainly just as far as how it's performed relative to our debt to revenue ratio, are you able to answer that or will that take a little time? Through you, Chair, I can answer it in a, in a sort of high-level manner. As I think I said before, look, the markets have performed strongly, really from you know post-global financial crisis, um, you know, through to really the last last 12 months. So the returns have been relatively strong. Um, but again, that's that's not to say that the returns in the future are going to mirror those in the past. Um, it's a very well-diversified portfolio. So its returns will tend to mirror uh, market returns. But again, it, it, to, to your point, um, you know, we can easily find investments which are expected to yield a higher return than our cost of borrowing, albeit they're at a higher risk. So the answer, is the answer then that the fund has performed better in enhancing our debt to revenue ratio than we would have had otherwise? That's what it amounts to. Through you, Chair, I, I can't answer that specifically based on the data. Why not? The data in front okay, of me. just through you, Mr. Chair, I just want to put that question on the table. From my perspective, it's quite a significant uh, question, and the answer is important, and it goes to the contention that Councillor Casey was raising around the uh, haste in that bolt on. Um, I'll leave that. Yeah. The other question I've got just goes to the matters that Mr Howell was raising around um, the um, Norwegian Sovereign um, Investment Fund a and the background of that is it's around a trillion I think about 1.3 per cent of global um, investment. Are they able to find um, practical and uh, pragmatic um, companies to um, invest in um, given that that fund obviously covers a gamut of things that we're actually considering here? Yeah. Look, through you, Chair, look, I'm not totally familiar with what um, nor just all the, the fund does. I mean, I know one of their investments is um, they do buy Auckland Council bonds. OK, I, I guess my question goes to the issue that you raised around practicalities. And what I'm suggesting is if there are other funds, such as that fund, which is immense on a global scale, that is able to invest practically in the sorts of things we're talking about, then what difficulty are we going to find? Through you, Chair, um, they would do a lot of their investment directly given their size. For example, they'll invest directly in Auckland Council. Yeah. And Just the, the other uh, question I raise around um, that, that fund, have you considered some of the things that uh, that fund has in respect of its parameters around... Um, Corruption, polluting industries, um, nuclear um, investments, uh, human rights, for example. Uh, are we able to capture those things in what we are progressing here? Yeah. Again, through you, policies? Yeah, through, through you, Chair. Again, there's, there's many different ideas and ways to look at responsible investment policy. Um, the Norwegian Investment Fund is just one. There are, there are many, many others. And I go back to my point that um, there's no one right answer here. Different funds, different people are going to have different views on what they believe is appropriate. I, I understand that. I guess my, my question is around, given the substantial global significance of that fund and its track record over time, did you consider the, the parameters that that fund has as having some relevance to what we're proposing? Through you, Chair. No, we haven't explicitly looked at the Norwegian fund. 
we engaged uh, CAR out of Australia to give us their view on what is best and normal practice in this area. Thank you, Mr Chair. Councillor Newman. Thank you. Um, just my question relates to the mechanics of proposed resolution D. The words uh, to be implemented in the 2017-18 financial year uh, appears to seek endorsement for a sell down. I just my question is have we fulfilled our legal requirement to do any consultation on this proposal prior to today? Have we met that threshold? That's the first question. Can someone answer that? Through the uh, chair, the previous uh, resolutions passed to sell down the to liquidate the two parcels of $100 million were part of the 2015 LTP consultation, where the consultation indicated it, it sought in views and feedback back on the uh, divestment of the portfolio. It did not specify amounts. But yes. Uh, yeah. Um, can you just confirm um, whether this particular fund complies with the definition of strategic asset under the policy on significance, because I'm looking at it, I don't think it does, but can you confirm? Uh, through the Chair, it's, uh, this fund is not designated a strategic asset. Oh. Yeah. So it's it's not a significance yeah. policy. A significance policy is the secondary question, and the significance policy, uh, I'll need to take um, further advice from, from legal on, which I will get for you and respond to your question. But it is not classified as a strategic asset on the balance sheet. But we have consulted on it. We have consulted on it in the 2015 LTP, as I stated. Strategic asset, what is? That's what I said. Puffin article. And there was no major. I didn't get okay, answered. Thank you. Is that Councillor Newman? Yeah. Yep. Councillor Cashmore. Thanks. Uh, Daniel's question was actually one of the ones I had that was the same thing about level significance. But my first question to the officers is, bearing in mind we're talking about investment criteria around the quality of the investment and the ethic efficacy of the investment, would that also cover off divestment? And if it does, what is the practical reality of divesting assets to ethical areas? Sorry, could you explain that question again? So the amendments that are written there talk about the investment, so investing into ethical areas. If we're talking about divesting assets, does the same apply? And if so, is that possible? Through you, Chair, so, so I make sure I understand your question. So what you're saying is if we divest the funds, what we reinvest in, is that going to be considered no, where, ethical? Where we sell them to, so are we selling them into ethical, selling to ethical funds? Sorry, through you, Chair, I have to get you to explain the question once okay. more. Yeah. So we are, when we invest, we're saying we're only going to invest into good assets, right? Mm -hmm. So when we divest, and most of these assets are held in conglomerate funds, do we only, we, when we divest, will we be doing the same thing only into what would be deemed to be ethical fund holders? We won't. We don't Saying if you reinvest so the money. Through, through, through you, Chair, I mean, if this policy is, is passed and we keep the funds, then anything we divest out of would have to go in to a fund or investments which meet this same policy's criteria. criteria. So my my follow-up question is then, is that possible? It gets better. Through, through you, Chair, of course it's possible because we could do it directly, um, but of as I stated before, there will be a fewer funds available that we could utilise and we may have to invest directly, which would add a significant layer of cost and administration. Mm. Yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm sorry about the, co the complexity, but it's, it's a particular catch point we need to be aware of. Mr Chair, my, as I said, my second question was the same as Councillor Newman's. My third is to you. Given that item C up there says endorse a review of the long-term viability of the diversified asset portfolio and D talks about requesting the group financial officer report back on a strategy for a managed disposal. Um, there's a fair degree of similarity there and I'm just wondering if C could actually do the same sort of thing as D is requesting. Look, uh, I'm, I'm happy to withdraw, have withdraw D because I believe it's covered by Excellent. C as well. It's, it's no problem with me. It's just a matter uh, of the like second that may not want to do that at the moment. I'd like but, to yeah. be able to talk to D yep. first, uh, Mr Chair. Yep. <coughs> oh, we hear what you're saying. So, yep. so uh, Councillor 
Derby. Are you ready now? Because we obviously want to consider those amendments. Yeah, so look, policy there. So I've distributed that Mr. to Chairman, all the members. I did have a question before we get into it. No, I've got a question. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I didn't see Councillor Kinsley. So, actually, yes. Councillor Casey has popped up again too. I already we'll come back to you, Councillor yeah, it's, it's back to D, and if D stays, and I would like it to go, but if it stays, <laughs> there are 45 pages here about the responsible investment policy. There is no page at all about this fund. Mm, yes, As a councillor, I want to know about the fund, its history, its where it's going, where it's been, and there's no information. I do not make decisions like this. None at all. So I, I don't want to hear from another councillor about why that should stay in. I think you as chair should take it out and I'll be happy. And can we move on because this should have been a good day to have a responsible investment policy. It's brilliant for Auckland Council and I'd like to talk to that. I don't want to talk about the diversified assets sell down today because you haven't convinced me that we need to do it because there's no piece of paper and the public haven't heard about it yet. Sorry, I'm looking at you but it's through the chair. Please remove D and we'll get on with the meeting. I see I've got Councillor Simpson wants to speak to that. So we've got Councillor Quacks first, though, then Councillor Simpson. And look, thank you for... Uh, it's been a really good debate, actually, an interesting debate. And uh, uh, I, I uh, tend to agree with, um, with, 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 with Councillor Watson that if this, if this uh, uh, diversified uh, financial assets portfolio is to go, then we wouldn't have these uh, circular arguments about uh, uh, and the, the people moralising on things that, you know, are very difficult to get around. But, you know, in 2015, we did get a report uh, from Cameron Partners about this um, diversified uh, financial assets portfolio. Um, do you recall what their recommendations uh, were on that? Uh, and whether, was, whether it was a strategic asset of councils? Through you, Chair. Um, again, those reports um, both concluded that the, the portfolio was not a strategic asset for council, um, especially in light of our, our balance sheet constraints and infrastructure needs. Thank you, Thank you John. Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, in reading this paper, it does talk about, um, from the staff, that, we, that they recommend that there be a review of the whole portfolio anyway. It does say that we have agreed to sell down in, in quite significant chunks. Um, I do actually understand where we have come to with regards to looking at um, investments that are the right sort of investments, and I do understand the uh, recommendations presented by those in public forum, and um, to a great deal I support that. But in looking at the whole picture, um, I did ask myself, well, why have we even got this fund? It's been nicknamed a rainy day fund. And if we have a look around, we haven't, it hasn't just been raining, it's been pouring. And we could be the old man snoring, but actually we should be brave and say we need to do something. We have this amount of money, we have the ability to use it to pay down some debt and to spend it on infrastructure with the, which the city is so desperately in need of. If you don't do that, you are actually holding us back by hundreds of millions of dollars to deliver on what we want, Auckland's vision of putting money into infrastructure, which we are so far behind. It's a finance meeting. It's about using our money wisely. The staff are supporting what that recommendation is. Ladies and gentlemen, it's got to stay. We've got to be brave and do something and put our line, feet, feet in the sand, put a line in the sand and say, right, this council will start investing some serious money in our infrastructure, pay down debt and get on with the job. If we do anything else, we're just delaying that process. You can't complain when we haven't got money to do stuff when you are actually even suggesting that when money is available, we're not going to use it. Thank you. We're moving to a blending of... Uh, questions and, and comments. So, Councillor Hills, you, you have flexibility. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm not 
asking questions because I think we've kind of gone past that stage. Um, I just want to get back to the original um, proposal as well and focus on the great work of uh, many people in this room and the great work of the officers and the previous council for getting this up the, um, up the order. I think it is important to have a policy for now and for the future regardless of what happens to this, um, this fund because if we do as a council invest in the future or have other investments, this kind of puts a line in the sand and says what we stand for and what we want to be invested in and what we want the public funds of, of our city to be invested in. So I think it's really important that we have this policy whether or not this 130 million um, hangs around. I think it's about the future and what we invest in. <coughs> Climate change, and I keep mentioning in the workshops around the Auckland Plan refresh. Climate change is one of the, our probably the biggest issue that we face as a city. Um, I don't think it is a task too big to, to handle. I've only been here six months. If people have been around um, and find it difficult, then so be it. But I think we are doing great things as a council, um, but we can do a lot more in general. This is one small piece of the pie of what we stand for and what we think we should be investing in. So if it's about fossil fuels, of course, you know, we should be moving away from that completely because we are trying to flip it the other way. If we're getting better public transport, we are, you know, 50% increase in public transport journeys since Auckland Council came around. We're nearly 90 million this year. That's great. We're getting more cycleways. We are trying to get things like light rail. Um, happening in our city and that's because we want people to be using public transport and address climate change issues, address the issues for our environment and this is one of those things. So thank you for all involved and I think the whether or not we sell down and use the, the money um, to pay off debt and invest in infrastructure is a separate issue. We need to be proud of the policy and the direction for our council and what we stand for and what we invest money in. So thank you.